Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for inviting me to be part of this project to present here today. Uh, my talk is going to be about uh, labor market turnover and inequality in Latin America. So uh, it's almost consensus that uh, labor turnover is high in Latin America despite the strict labor market regulations. So 24 to 44 percent of the workforce separates from their jobs every year. And this is, of course, largely linked to the high informality, as we all know, it exists in Latin America. So, and in fact, informal sector jobs last around three times less than formal sector jobs. So, there are, uh, there are unclear correlations in be between turnover and, in and uh, inequality. Why is that? Because on the one hand, it lowers uh, turnover, it lowers on the job capital accumulation, leading to lower wage growth over the life, over the life cycle. And effects can be even worse if you, if you return to firm or sector or occupation specific capital are high. On the other hand, there are gains from reallocating workers from low to high productive jobs. And uh, as mobility is a source of wage growth, as evidence shows, and it's also theoretically very, very theoretically very explored, uh, especially early in the career, as uh, there is uh, learning problems and learning issues, and uh, uh, as workers uh, stay on the firm and uh, and of course uh, get older. Uh, the match gets improved and, and uh, they get promoted and they get to stay in the firm over the time. So this uh, presentation will go through this, uh, uh, this main point, so I'll be very quick here. So I'm going to show some main facts of patterns on labor market mobility uh, in Latin America and other developed and compared to developed countries. So two uh, simple questions that we, also, we all want to know is, uh, is labor turnover truly high in Latin America compared to rich countries? And how is turnover related to the degree of stringency of labor market regulations? Because it might be that turnover is not as high when you look just at the, at the number, but then when you compare across countries in terms of labor market regulations, it doesn't make sense. So I'm going to provide some detailed measures of job-to-job -job transitions by real rate wage variation, including switching of occupation, industry, firm size, and formality status. And for these, I'm going to use the microdata, the LFS data from four countries. Then I'm going to discuss some main implications for inequality. And if time allows, I'm going to show some further evidence on the role of non-wage benefits on job turnover. So uh, yearly, total separation rates that can be exit from the labor force or exit to unemployment or job-to-job -job transitions, they range for OECD, OECD countries between 11 and 41 percent. So there is a overlap range. Uh, the range actually overlaps for Latin American countries, so you cannot really say that total job separation rates are higher for our countries, maybe a bit higher on the lower end. But then, uh, indeed, here we, we don't see much of a difference, and there is significant overlap. So, in terms of job exit to non employment, we have for OECD countries between 4 and 23 percent, and for LAC countries between 11 and 16 percent. Again, a significant overlap of these measures uh, across, uh, let's say, LAC developing countries and OECD countries. Uh, Job-to-job -job transitions are, are, let's say, there is a significant overlap, but there is, they are significantly higher. So if you consider all job-to-job -job transitions out of total job separation rates, total job separation rates, we're going to see Latin America having this always about, about, uh, above 50, which is, uh, it seems quite high. We just need to understand whether this, this is going to you know, more productivity jobs or less productivity jobs, they're having wage gains or not. So, uh, when you compare across countries, I'll go very quickly here, total job separation rates are closer 
are comparable between Latin America and Germany, US, Denmark, Italy, and Portugal. Job-to-job -job rates are very similar to the US. So on average, LAC countries have job-to-job -job transition rates closer to the US. Uh, however, the US has one of the least strict labor market re regulations, at least when we look at the EPL index from the OECD. So US has this index, which range, the, the, the index is between, is between one and six, so US has 0.5 and Brazil 1.84, uh, closer to the average of OECD countries, closer to Europe, actually. So it, our, let's say, our turnover rates, they are, they are high comparatively. Uh, uh, not comparatively to the U.S., but uh, actually when you consider the, the amount, uh, the, the strictness of labor market regulations. So, uh, implications for inequality. Turnover may, be increase, may increase inequality because some workers benefit from it while others do not. So there is evidence and plenty of evidence that transitions into informal employment, employment are more frequent for young women and low-skilled workers. And there is also recent evidence from, ac from across many OECD countries, at least within the OECD uh, or across OECD countries, we, we see that uh, the positive correlation between turnover and wage growth is not driven by low-skilled, low-wage workers in such countries. So there is also evidence that turnover is not driven by this. So it might be that heterogeneity is a great part of this why turnover is related to increases in inequality. Uh, also, turnover may increase inequality because of unproductive transition. So people are moving more often, more often uh, between uh, towards the informal sector, either self-employment or informal employment, and this is the reason why uh, we have uh, an increase in inequality, it may be part of it, right? So this is evident, also evidence from more than 100, 100 countries showing that uh, these such unproductive transitions are the drives of uh, uh, an increase in inequality. So, uh, so the, the, for Latin America, evidence is very scarce, and that, that's why I wanted to contribute for this part. So there is a, a rare contribution by Julian and Joana Silva, where they show that relatively high-wage workers in the informal sector transition to low-paying jobs in the informal sector. And, um, okay, so there is another reason why turnover may be related to inequality, which is not related to exempt heterogeneity. So it could be that uh, individuals, they become uh, heterogeneous exposed just because they move a lot across occupations and then they move, they have a uh, uh, differential tenure since they move a lot across occupation. And occupation tenure is uh, if there are substantial returns to occupation tenure by moving across occupation, of course, they are losing something. And that's why when they lose human capital, that's one of the reasons why you could have an increase in inequality. So, and to the extent that there are more higher returns to tenure in the formal sector in developing countries than the, in the US, you might have uh, mobility across occupations playing some role in explaining high wage inequality. So I'm gonna provide some additional evidence, uh, additional evidence on four countries. We used micro data from this country, tried to harmonize them as much as we could. Sorry, 10 minutes. 11, 11 thank you. Uh, as much as we could. So uh, why is that? Because we don't, in the harmonized data, that is available, we don't have all such transitions, all detailed transitions that we need, need to uh, address some quality of transitions in this work. So, and then that's why we, so to start, when you look at this data, the micro data, we see that uh, annual job to job transition rates are, are not very dissimilar across uh, between Mexico and Brazil. 
uh, even compared to the U.S. Again, this is just for comparison. This is the job-to-job -job transition rate for the U.S. This is Brazil and Mexico. And here we have, sorry, we have Argentina and Brazil uh, and Ecuador closer to Spain and is Portugal. That, is that without any intervening period of unemployment. So these are direct transitions, yeah. Uh, okay, so we see among the movers, the annual movers, right? So the, we see large wage gains. I mean, at least we see higher, for most countries here, above 50% have higher, have an increasing wage, a real increasing wage, right? It's all, when you compare with the stayers, we have more gains, at least in, in terms of the, the proportion. We have a proportion of uh, gainers, which is higher among the movers than among the stayers, right? But there is a lot, of, and also there is a lot of job changes as, associated with the real wage increase in these four countries compared to OECD countries. However, our stayers in Latin America, they lose more, too. So they gain more when they move, and they lose more when they stay. So on average, when you calculate the average gain, right, with those proportions in the, in the wage increase, we see in the wage losses, uh, we are going to see like larger wage gains uh, for, for movers than for stayers. Uh, heterogeneity. So when you look by gender, we see that women move less. They move relatively less, not so much for most countries. Uh, and the gains for women uh, uh, are, actually, are actually higher if they moved, right? So they are, when they move, the gains are relatively higher. So it's not really clear why... Uh, uh, Anyway, we have, uh, let's, let's move to the average growth. So basically, when you calculate the average wage growth, we see that the gains for women are higher, so re but remember that they move less. So that's the reason why we might have some heterogeneity coming from the fact that they move, they, they take less uh, opportunity by moving. So regarding education, when you do this by education, we see the diffraction of job-to-job -job changes decreased by education uh, in most countries among uh, college-educated individuals. So why is this so? Uh, basically because the blue is, is more like uh, prominent here. So you see like, uh, you know, which is consistent with the lower, you know, benefits from, from job search among the more educated individuals. Uh, although they would have larger gains, relatively larger gains, 56% against 53 and so on. So, on average, let's say that for most countries except Ecuador, the gains from moving are higher for college educated, and the gains from staying as well. So, the gains from staying suggests positive return to education or to training or to um, job-specific um, uh, capital. And the returns from, uh, for the movers suggest that there are still returns from moving in Latin America for, for college-educated individuals, despite the fact that they, they should have, well, at least theoretically, lower uh, gains from search and from moving across jobs. So by age, this is the most imp impressive, I mean, and expected. So young people, they move much more, okay? So they, they learn, they, they move, they, they, they move until they find a good match. Uh, and then uh, they also have larger gains from moving than from staying. So if you look at Ecuador, Mexico, they, they actually, they might lose by staying comparatively. So if you look, uh, this green with this green. Okay, so on average, they have much larger gains from moving than from staying from most countries, except I think Argentina has also relative. But still, when you compare this side with this, we have larger gains. 
So uh, I have some detailed results as well. I don't think I will have time no one to, to go through five quickly. I looked at the occupation switching, one digit. Uh, I looked at the industry switching. By occupation, there are gains from switching occupations. Of course, this graph here doesn't show where they're going. Uh, the, the, when I, we look at the occupations, a larger matrix, when you see exactly if they move to higher occupation positions or to lower, we see that these gains are driven by any move that involves a skill upgrade. Uh, and there's selection, a lot of selection of younger individuals moving upwards. When you look at the industry switching, there's also considerable switching across uh, industry, one digit industry, uh, less than occupation, which is consistent with the literature. So people move more across occupations than uh, across industries. And when they move, they have a gain, but uh, however, they, they might lose by moving. So, and these wage gains from moving, they also, they happen from um, uh, when individuals move from manufacturing to all other sectors, which is interesting because there is a literature which shows that uh, there is some, uh, let's say, a, a reasonable degree of transfer, transferability of skills across from when you leave manufacturing to other industries. Uh, okay, so firm size, there's also, there are some gains, but the gains of moving firm size is when we move from small firms, zero to five workers, to higher size firms. You all, always, or almost always lose when you move downwards, from larger firms to uh, larger, I mean six, to 40 or 41 upwards. Uh, so basically, moving to very small firms, you might have a, a, a loss. So uh, I looked at transitions across sectors, and I do find that uh, the gains are driven when there are gains from moving across sectors, employment sectors, employment categories. Uh, gains are driven by informal workers and the self-employed who are able to move this, yeah, who are able to move to the formal sector, or by the self-employed who become an employee in the informal sector. So, all is suggesting that, uh, you know, I mean, if on average informal sectors are, are less productive, is less productive transitions, or transitions towards less productive jobs, is what drives the, the, the wage losses. So here is just to, this is very fresh, uh, I just, uh, people ask, like, what if you, you control these statistics for, you look at the relationship uh, between inequality and turnover, which is the objective here, and then one way we could do is, uh, and, and I did here, is to look at within group wage inequality, so I focused on gene inequality, gene index, uh, I, and um, I looked at the contribution of job-to-job -job rate and job to job rate with the wage increase or staying rate or job separation for the, the Gini inequality index. So basically we find that uh, when you look at the, the column two and three, we, we see that the job to job rate contributes less than the staying rate for the reduction in the Gini inequality. And except when the job-to-job -job transition involves a wage increase, okay? Whereas uh, uh, staying rate, there are relatively, there are gains that uh, might involve not immediate gains like uh, annual gains, so you might have uh, yearly gains. And in that case, this further contributes to, to a decrease in, in gene inequality. But there is something about staying the same positions, which might be the returns to, to occupation-specific or industry-specific or firm-specific human capital that uh, contributes to the decline in inequality. So when I look at the cells, because this is controlled, this is a pseudo panel by country, uh, year, age, education, groups, three groups of age, three groups of education, and gender. So basically, when I control for this, this is, uh, I separate the cells with the low informality and the cells with the high informality. And then when you look at the low informality, let's say cells, 
we're going to see a relatively higher contribution of job-to-job uh, -job turnover for reductions in, 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 in inequality. And why is that so? These guys actually move within the, let's say, cells or within uh, places where you have less informality, so you have more higher chance of having more productivity wage gains, more, more productivity uh, turnover, which leads to wage gains. Okay, so just to two slides to finalize, I won't be able to go through the whole thing, but uh, I use data, detailed micro data from four lakh countries. Uh, there are larger fractions of movers with a pay cut in Latin America than in OECD countries. Exante heterogene heterogeneity suggests that uh, uh, there is some role for, for the types of moves among uh, low educated, less educated and older workers or uh, basically uh, driving the uh, inequality because average gains are also lower for them. Okay, so uh, in the, there is some regarding exposed heterogeneity the face value, when you look at the statistics of occupation changes, we are actually much, we have much lower occupation change compared to the US. Sometimes half of the mobility of the US. And still, why should we worry about it? So, one reason is that we have very steep wage tenure profiles. So, I think we should combine these two evidence because um, just look, by looking at the occupation transitions, this is not enough to conclude that uh, this is not an issue, uh, a type of transition which is not going to be an issue in our case. And finally, um, we have some uh, indication that some less productivity transitions are happening uh, towards uh, small firms and then towards uh, uh, informal sector, of course, and all these labor market segregation will uh, and the transitions across all these dimensions will contribute for, uh, likely contribute for the, well, actually work is not, don't seem to reallocate more productive jobs is what contributes to inequality. So I stop here. I won't have time to go through further evidence. Thank you.